consumer has a very broad palate and as a result of that food is imported into the UK from all over the world. An officer may find himself sampling sausages from a butcher's shop one day, the next day he may find himself sampling spices from the Far East. If a sample is to be analysed, which means if it's to be tested for its constituents or contaminants, then it has to go to the public analyst. If the sample is for some microbiological contamination, which is bacteria or mould, then it should go to the food examiner. There could be several reasons why you may want to take samples. They may be for legal reasons, to make sure that a particular outlet is complying with legislation. It may be as part of an outbreak investigation to see whether you can identify a particular food type associated with patients who are ill. It may be part of surveillance activities, it may be following an inspection that the officers decide that they may want to take samples because they're unhappy with some aspect of that premises. Or it may be part of a structured survey to establish the microbiology of a particular food type and whether it is as we would expect for that particular food type. The Food Standards Agency may require local authorities to carry out sampling of certain products. Say there's been an alert from the European Union, for example, that a type of food that's been imported into the EU has been contaminated. The FSA may ask the local authorities to carry out sampling of that product. With a sampling programme, I would start by, by looking at some research, try and identify what areas of concern there are to consumers about foodstuffs. Perhaps you could look at some um, consumer-based websites, the FSA website. Secondly, you're going to want to take some samples from companies within your area, because obviously it's a priority to ensure that your own companies comply with the law. Thirdly, you might want to look at uh, your complaints database and identify what types of complaints you received about foodstuffs. And fourthly, you would want to identify regional or national programmes to see if you want to be involved. We're part of a team and we're complementary parts of a team. We all have a, a function to play. So we will liaise with sampling officers, we will give them advice, we will help them with any technical scientific questions they have to do with their sampling and at the end of the analysis we'll produce a report for them that they will use but then again the liaison carries on after that. If they have any queries about it, if there's any follow-up action requiring technical input then we're there to help with that and ultimately if it goes through some sort of legal process, we can go to court as expert witnesses and present evidence in court. Do you have a written cleaning schedule of at course, all? Yeah, right, yeah. you sort of have a look at that. Sure. Again, so I know what you're doing, yeah. what chemicals yeah. you're using. And then the swabbing will help highlight A, if it's working, and B, if there's any areas where it needs to be tightened up a bit. Mm -hmm. Any suppliers will come in stop there and then this is the good thing to take. We do offer advice and we run training courses on how to take samples as well and it's important that the samples are taken aseptically, that's using proper techniques so that you don't cross-contaminate the sample from the surroundings or from the implements that you're using to take the sample with. You would always wear a clean white coat and a hat there may be arguments for wearing latex gloves when carrying out sampling. You certainly would wash your hands before carrying out any sampling. And the main reason why you'd wear protective clothing is because you don't wish to introduce any form of contamination from yourself to the sample that you're sampling, and that's obviously that's self-evident. There are two types of sampling, basically. We call them formal and informal. Informal samples tend to be taken when the officer doesn't envisage taking any formal action, i.e. cautioning somebody, perhaps prosecuting them, the whole matter ending up in court. You might take an informal sample when you're advising one of your local businesses, for example, when you know that whatever the result of analysis, all you're going to offer to the business is advice. Formal sample is one which an officer takes uh, in such a way that it complies with all the applicable legislation. And if at the end of the day, he feels it appropriate, the matter could be taken to court. Oh, Krishna, we have a formal sample. Could you come and do the necessary? Thank you. For the formal sample, the burden of proof in terms of what the laboratory produces is much greater than it is for an informal sample where there can't be legal action. So in a laboratory, it's important to know if it's a formal sample and to make sure that everything that's done guarantees that the answer is 100% right rather than any possibility of it being different. We take more care with the continuity, the chain of evidence with those samples to make sure that there are no 
chinks in the chain so that if it does come to court that we are confident that all our procedures are in place as far as the legal evidence is concerned. If there's any shadow of a doubt as to the sample that was submitted or the details that came with the sample or anything other than the sample that was taken, then it can get thrown out of court immediately. This is very much a team effort in the investigation. No one person plays a primary role. We work together, other colleagues within the Health Protection Agency, with the Health Protection Units and the Consultants in Communicable Disease Control and the HOs. We all work very closely as a team and with our reference units here as well. So we will look at the case and we'll all give our individual bit of expertise into this team effort. It's important to recognise that just because a sample is found to be satisfactory, and maybe all samples in a, a project could be found to be satisfactory, that is not a waste of time sampling, because it's very important to show that things are satisfactory, for manufacturers to know that they're being checked upon, and to catch the one time when they're not satisfactory. The point of this is that we're here to protect the public health. We're here to ensure that the food sold and produced in the area where we work and where we have a responsibility for is safe.